Good morning. This is our midweek Bible study in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're in part two. This is a long chapter with a lot of uh, meat in it and to some uh, difficult to understand verses, so we're going to break it down the best we can and pray the Lord give us uh, wisdom and, and grace to do this. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, we ask you to uh, deliver this message by the power of your spirit and, and with detail so that understanding is brought. We, we pray that every time teaching goes out, not only will it give people a hunger for the word and a desire to study these chapters more, but it will help them to understand what you're saying to the church today. I pray, Lord, your blessing over this study today and bless each one who receives this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's blow the shofar and call the people of God to study. When we, when we come to this chapter, we broke it in half because it's such a long chapter. And uh, we left off uh, with Paul in, in verse 29. Paul is continuing his argument here uh, of the, the effects and how, how dangerous it is. It's a dangerous doctrine to say that there is no resurrection, that there will not, we will not have a glorified body uh, when the Lord comes. Let's go, let's look at verse uh, 29 through 32, and it says, Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead, if the dead are not raised at all? Now, a lot, a lot of people get really hung up on this verse, and they say, well, that, that sounds like an occult teaching or a false doctrine or whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, there are many different interpretations of this verse, but one of the simplest is, being baptized for the dead, and we're identified with Christ. When we when we are baptized in water, when when we we when we go under the water, we're identified with the death and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we rise up out of that water, we we are identified with His resurrection and new life, eternal life. And so that's one way to look at this verse. Uh, you can study it more on your own, but uh, don't get hung up on that. A lot of people try to uh, make something uh, false out of that. Um, in verse 30, Why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts in Ephesus, what advantages is it to me if the dead do not rise? Let us eat, drink, and for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Evil, evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness. Do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. Now, I'm going at this, the, this next section here. Uh, people need to understand very clearly. And I'm going to go back to verse um, 32, the last part of verse 32. And remember, this, this is still the same subject. Paul is talking about... Uh, people that, that were trying to deny that there is a resurrection for those that believe in Christ. Uh, let's, let's look at, uh, and this, I'm going to read this from the Living Bible. And remember, the Living Bible uh, was a translation. Uh, it was translated from the uh, original Hebrew and, and the Old Testament. It was translated from Aramaic. The New Testament was translated from Aramaic, which is the language that Jesus spoke, and it's translated from Aramaic into modern-day English, the way we speak, so you'll, it'll be easier for you to understand. Uh, in, in verse 32, the second part of that verse, he says, If we will never live again after we die, then we might as well have ourselves a good time. Let us eat, drink, and be merry. What's the difference? For tomorrow we die and that's the end of everything. How many people on the face of the earth believe that right now, that uh, there is just this life and we might as well just live it up because that's all there is? Uh, there are a lot of Christians that have that attitude too. We, we, we need to live uh, a life in Christ and prepare for the next life in that glorified body. In verse 33, it says, Don't be fooled by those who say such things. If you listen to them, you'll start acting like them. So he's talking to the church. Remember, he's talking to Corinthians. He's talking to Christians. And he's saying, if you, if you listen to them, if you're fooled by what they say, you'll start acting like them. You'll start living like this life is all there is. 
get some sense and quit your sinning. So that false teaching will cause people to sin. Uh, that's, that's just a, a, a plain, simple rule. If you don't have the truth of the gospel and you're listening to false teaching, then you'll get caught up in sin. For to your shame, I say it, some of you are not even Christians at all and have never really known God. There are many people in churches today that, that go to church for various reasons. They like the atmosphere. They like the crowd. Uh, and one man uh, told me one time that he had joined a church, and I said, well, I didn't know you were a Christian. He goes, oh, I'm not. It's good for business. There are a lot of uh, rich businessmen in that church. And so people go to church for different reasons. Paul's saying um, some of you may not even be Christians at all. You're calling yourself Christians, but then you're believing this false doctrine that there is no resurrection. Uh, some may ask, how will the dead be brought back to life again? What kind of bodies will they have? So the, these, are the, these are legitimate questions. Uh, what a foolish question. You'll find the answer in your own garden. Now, one thing that Jesus did and Paul did often was to teach uh, uh, lessons that related to agriculture because remember they were it wasn't an industrial society it was an ag agrarian society that they lived in and they could relate to to examples from agriculture and he goes in he goes on when you put a seed into the ground doesn't it grow into a plant and let it it doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first the seed has to die in the ground and then life comes forward he says when the green shoot comes up out of the seed, it is very different from the seed that you first planted. For all you put into the ground is a dry little seed of wheat or whatever it is you're planting. Then God gives it a beautiful new body, just the kind he wants it to have. A different kind of plant grows from each seed. Just as there are different kinds of seeds and plants, so there are different kinds of flesh. Humans, animals, fish, birds uh, are all different. The angels in heaven have bodies far different from ours, and the beauty and the glory of their bodies is different from the beauty and glory of ours. <coughs> the sun has one kind of glory, the moon and the stars have, have another kind. The stars different from each, differ from each other in their beauty and brightness. In the same way, our earthly bodies, which die and de decay, are different from the bodies we shall have when we come back to life again, for they will never die. We're in a mortal body now. This body will die and decay. But when we are resurrected, we will receive a glorified body that will never, ever die. The bodies we have now embarrass us. I like the way Paul says that. Uh, our bodies that we have now are pitiful compared to our eternal bodies. The bodies we have now embarrass us, for they become sick and die. But they will be full of glory when we come back to life again. Yes, we are weak we, we are, yes, they are weak, dying bodies now, but when we live again, they will be full of strength. They are just human bodies at death, but when they come back to life, they will be superhuman bodies. For just as there are natural human, there, just as there are natural human bodies, there are also supernatural spiritual bodies. So our, our resurrected body will be a spiritual body, a glorified body. Our resurrected body will be like the body of Christ that he, he lives in now, a, a resurrected body. The scriptures tell us that the first Adam, the first man, Adam, was given a natural human body, but Christ is more than that, for he was he was life-giving spirit. First, then, we have these human bodies. Later on, later on, God gives us spiritual heavenly bodies. Adam was made from the dust of the earth, but Christ came from heaven above. Every human has a body just like Adam, made of dust, but all who become Christ, all who become Christians, Christ, plural there, will have the same, or, or possessive, will have the same kind of body as his, a body from heaven. Just as each of us now has a body like Adam's, so someday we, we will have a body like Christ. And I pray that, that that reading from this Living Bible helps you understand that portion of Scripture. And, and keep in mind, they were speaking to a people that understood agriculture. They understood planting that seed in the ground, let that seed die, and then it comes forth uh, a new plant. Just as our, our earthly bodies die, 
they're weak and they're dying, but then they will come back to life at the return of the Lord. Now, at the end of the chapter here, he goes on to explain how this resurrection, how this new life is going to take, take place. In verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So our corrupt body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It has to be changed. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So there are going to be people who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that are alive when the Lord returns and, and the dead are raised first and then those that are alive are changed or given a glorified body. That's a, that's a miraculous thing that's going to take place, an amazing thing that's going to take place. The, the dead all over the world, the remains, the ashes, the dust, the, 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 the remains in the grave will be uh, raised up and and they will be glorified the body will be glorified and changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye it says but we shall all be changed in the moment verse 52 in the moment in the twinkling of an eye it's going to happen so rapidly people say well I, when i hear that trumpet then i'll get right with the lord the, the transformation is going to be so rapid. The twinkling of an eye is the speed of light. It's not the blink of an eye. If it, even if it were the blink of an eye, you wouldn't have time to get right with God. <clears throat> at, the, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So the, those that have died in Christ will receive their glorified body first, and then those who are alive will be changed and receive that glorified body. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. We cannot, we cannot rise to meet the Lord in the air in this mortal body. This mortal body has limitations of uh, height, oxygen, pressure, and all that kind of stuff. So we, we have to be changed and receive a glorified body as the same kind of body Christ has. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the glorification of those that are living in Christ at his return is, is, is the defeat of death. There, there will be no more, death will have no more power over the people of God. O oh, death, from Hosea, this is a prophecy from Hosea 13 and 14. It says, uh, then will be brought to pass, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. In verse 55, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? And that's from Hosea, the prophet Hosea, chapter 13, verse 14. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So the, the law brought people to repentance, brought people to understand they couldn't save themselves, they couldn't fix themselves. They were sinners and they needed salvation. But thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ takes care of that problem that, that the law alone could not save, but believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world our perfect sacrifice that went to the cross, believing on him, says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in closing this chapter, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. He, he teaches all of this so, so that they will come back to the truth about the resurrection and the glorification of the saints of God. Uh, therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, he uses these words, steadfast and immovable. Get a hold of the truth of the word of God. Be steadfast in it. Walk steadfast in it. Walk continually in it. And be immovable. Be, be like that tree that's planted by a water, that walk by the water that cannot be moved, as, as the Psalms say. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. What else can I do for the Lord? How, how can I do it better? abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Those things that we do in Christ, whether it's sharing some, sharing the gospel with somebody, praying for somebody, uh, bringing uh, food to them, uh, ministering to the sick, uh, preaching the gospel, teaching the word of God, 
do those things uh, without becoming weary, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Resurrection is coming and reward is coming for those who have given their life to Christ and serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart. We're going to close in prayer and we'll get into the last chapter, chapter 16, next week. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, I thank you for this chapter. This chapter, the last, especially the last half of this chapter, explains our glorious hope. Though even if we go the way of the grave, we'll be raised to see the Lord in the air and meet all of our uh, friends and family that have gone on in Christ. And then if we're still alive in the trumpet sounds, we'll be changed and we'll receive a glorified body just like Jesus has. And we're going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to see him, the one who died on the cross for our sins. I pray if there's one listening today and that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that today they will cry out, Lord, I, I want this hope. I want this hope of resurrection. I want this hope of eternal life. I'm a sinner. Oh, Lord, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I pray, Lord, blow the trumpet in the church right now. Wake up the church to realize we're in the last of the last days. It's harvest time. Time is running out. The harvest is going bad. And then there'll be, there'll be a date when it's too late to harvest. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the church will get busy, get stirred up, get on fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we'll be having another encouraging message, a weekend message, possibly recording that on Friday because we have men's breakfast Saturday morning, 8 o'clock at our hall. If you're in the area, come and join the, join the men. God bless.